Hi everyone, it's Christopher Swan, and welcome to this week's episode of Living Your Journey. Each week, I get the amazing opportunity to chat with people that love what they do in life. They understand their passions. Maybe it's a career path or the social impact that they're making. It's kind of like they're following their North Star. Even though their story may change, they understand that they're on their journey every day. On the show today, I sit down with Hollywood actor Parvesh Chena. He's been in countless television roles and movies for over a decade. He's gained notoriety for his roles in the Barbershop movies, NBC's Outsourced, and Transformers Rescue Bots. In addition to his busy acting schedule, you'll soon see him in season two of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend coming this fall. Our conversation is all about an authentic view of a working actor. We're candid in our conversation, talking about why Parv acts, balancing roles you want versus ones you need to take, the current state of diversity and inclusion in Hollywood, Parv's career goals, and a lot more. This conversation isn't full of Hollywood glamour or sugar-coated. It's honest and real. It feels like a real peek into an actor's viewpoint. I'm so glad Parv shared his insights. Also, he's just an all-around great guy, so this is a real treat for me to catch up with my friend. Okay, let's jump into the conversation. I am super excited that you are here today finally so we can chat through your kind of amazing story and what you're doing next thanks for having me christopher absolutely so okay what's fresh and new i know which i'm going to bring it up right now because i want to talk about it but you do have a new recurring role coming up with crazy ex-girlfriend which sounds a lot of fun yeah i'm throwing that out there because i want to touch on that in a little bit but what i'd really love to um kind of jump in you know people just heard this intro about you so of course they know all things about you because i've said it perfectly but i'd love to talk a little bit about how you got into acting and what that looked like for you and uh, this is something i've i don't think i've ever asked you about you know uh, i know you grew up in illinois um but then jumping over to la was acting always part of your world was it always a dream for you yeah i grew up in um a suburb of chicago naperville and aurora they're kind of like sister cities in a sense, you know? Yeah. And our public high school, we just, like, by the time I was a senior, I think we were doing, like, eight shows really? a week. Really? Uh, a week, excuse me. Eight <laughs> shows a week. Eight shows a year. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's called slave labor, right? I don't, right, right. yeah. What? But it was awesome. So, like, I've always, I had that thing. I remember, like, John Mayer, the singer. Yeah. And I, cause I always thought he was so much older, like, listening to him when I was in high school, early college. But he, I remember him saying something which was very accurate. It always rung out with me that he knew what he wanted to do at such a young age. Yeah. And um, he kind of like, he. I remember him saying like he, his schoolwork or something suffered for it because he didn't care. And like, I remember by the end of high school, I was like, this, I'm not, I don't need calculus. <laughs> not, not to discalculate. Right. But just saying like, I, it's not what I want. I know. I'm not waiting until I'm 19 or 20 to declare a major. I know now what I want to do. Was was that acting per se, or was it because you know I think of you as an actor, a comedian. Yeah, you do. You can kind of do a, the whole gamut to me. You have great timing. I think you could be dramatic. So is it acting, or is that kind of like overall entertainment for you? Acting specifically, because like I know that there are definitely a lot of people who are like I want to be a comedian. I want to be a stand up. I want to be an improviser for me it was just acting like it was all all one like you weren't just one or the other or you weren't just one thing mm-hmm. i thought if you're an actor you're supposed to do it all mm. does that mean like um what about like stand-up to would that be part of that world or- i guess so stand up scary to me mm, yeah. you know because it feels like it feels lonely mm. i'd rather like be with friends and improvise that that's that was more my speed i'd rather play with people yeah, I get that. I mean, as a non-comedian and a non-actor, I would say stand-up seems super scary to me. It's almost like you're saying it from the level of, because when you're doing something with somebody else and you have a, another actor there or, yeah. or improvising, you can like play off energy, I would assume. And Exactly. And not to mention you get to play with people. Yeah. Not be all alone. Yeah. So from... Then thinking about that when you were young and you just, you kind of always knew, 
um, what brought you, I mean, was it always LA you knew was going to be the destination? I, I would think Hollywood, yeah, that's the right place. But if you would well, there's an element like LA has, you can get paid. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. You can, you can make a living. You don't have to have a second job. Yeah. Necessarily. And is it, was it film, specifically film and TV versus live theater? No, it was just that I had gotten into, I'd done a movie and the sequel was coming out. And um, I had auditioned for Bombay Dreams and gone to New York. They had like, you know, they had sent me like, okay, come to the next level in New York. I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm going to be a Broadway star. And then I couldn't get past like, I think the first few rounds. Mm. And they're like, all right, I'm going to go to LA and <laughs> be, work in TV and film. Also, a uh, movie I'd done, the sequel, Barbershop 2. Yeah. It was coming out. So I'm like, oh. Okay, then I should take advantage since I didn't move out here after the first one, first barber shop. I'm like, all right, I might as well now capitalize a little bit. And I even felt like I was a little late coming. I should come when I was 21, 22 instead of even 24 when I did. Mm. Was that just a like you mean feeling like you were late that you now had to start auditioning even further or or working with an agent differently? Yeah, but more just like youth is king mm. when you kind of start off. And so why wouldn't I have done? But then I also don't miss that time in Chicago. I worked in stage and I had a fun time. Yeah. So you know, solidified a lot of friendships and relationships and it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've had a lot of guests that have actually said something similar where they don't, they can look at it in a perspective and say, yeah, maybe I should have done that earlier, but I don't regret any of right. it because I wouldn't have had those great experiences you know, that I, you know, cherish today. So it does make sense. I think that's sense. very true. Yeah. Was, are you the only person in your family who's kind of been in the entertainment world or acting? I have an aunt, my mom's cousin, who had done some, I think she had done like a, um, a Bollywood film or two. But even then she got into politics in England and she had left it behind. Actually her son also, kind of my cousin, he is a cinematographer, but again, they're British, so I don't even consider them Indian, yeah, per se. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're Brits. The, the reason I ask it as well, too, uh, and maybe it's somebody else, if any, I was curious about influence. Was there, what, what, I think when we're children, you know, we see things around us and there are different things that we hold on to, and that's what we can be influenced for a career or okay. your hobbies. Was there anybody or anything that influenced you in that world of saying, I want to be that or, or even no. helped you learn the career? No, I just wanted to be, I just wanted people to clap at me when I, <laughs> when I did things. Yeah, I love that. I feel like that today. It's kind of true. I mean, like you, <laughs> you think about actors, like they, they'd they like to be clapped at. Yeah, they do. Abso well, absolutely. Right. It's the... Is it attention or is yeah. it just... Um... I think so. I'm going to say things and then you clap at me. <laughs> I want the people to do that when I walk in the room, Parv. Can you imagine? <laughs> now you now have a direction. And when you do it, I will I will clap for you as well. Yeah, see. Well, that's interesting. Well, then as you've been working toward, you know, like you, obviously you've been a working actor and you've been doing it for quite a few years. And I think, didn't you move out to LA like in... I don't know, was it 2004 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, okay. exactly. As, you, as you've been going along and, you know, obviously you meet a lot of people and I know you're well connected. Has anybody kind of, I know they're friends, but is there anybody that's kind of also helped you with the craft or given you some kind of advice as you've gone or grown? Yeah, I like Alex Billings. She's been like kind of like a guru to me. She was on, um, she's on, excuse me, uh, Transparent. Mm-hmm. And she's, um, I think, Davinia. I forget. I think that's the character's name. That's um, Jeffrey Tambor's best friend. Alex herself is trans. She's a trans actress from Chicago. And, and she's also been like a teacher of mine a mm -hmm. whole bunch. So I always have her. She's living such an authentic life, you know, being uh, trans, being an actress. And so, like, she, her voice is always in my head about, like, just be you you know, be the best you, that kind of stuff. It's just, she's been a great friend and teacher because she is, she did a lot of Steppenwolf's, this, uh, this craft, this kind of cla view of teaching called viewpoints, mm -hmm. which like Anne Bogart, Tina Landau, 
these directors, great directors, had uh, kind of cultivated about dealing with time and space and developing characters, like repetition, tempo, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your shape, your emotional gesture, all that, all this, you know, hippy dippy actor dancer shit. <laughs> but she taught that to me, and it just it does stay it stays with me a lot. Yeah, that's great. And actually, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, yeah. She's, she's terrific amazing. and transparent. And I, I I just caught up with um, How to Get Away with Murder, and I, she's in an episode of that, too, which I recently... Oh, made. yeah. And I was I like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I forgot about that she was... Computer. She did. Um, I think she was in that GLAAD award-winning episode of Grey's Anatomy mm. way back when, mm-hmm. where she, I think she's was, I think, the first trans actor to play trans wow. on television back in the day. That's... Yeah, so, yeah, my first thought is, yeah, she is terrific, and I can see her being very authentic. You you mentioned that as well, about her living that authentic life and her kind of helping you think about some of that. Is that important for you, in not just in life, but also in kind of what you're doing and how you are portrayed in the characters and the work that you're doing? A bit, because, I mean, so many actors have such fears about their image. You know, like they're always worried about what people will think, how they look, and everything like oh comedians should have no ego Mm. about that stuff so it's very sad when i see those people Mm -hmm. they they they're just they're boring (laughs) (laughs) boring because does that mean like because they're not being their true self so we we, like their personality doesn't shine they're in it for the wrong reason yeah they're They're in it because they want to be famous Mm. not because they, they want the work yeah, like loving what they do versus the yeah the fame and fortune that goes with it. Right. Yeah, and I would then would assume you're describing it for yourself. Like it's just, it's not just like yeah. I know you said you want people to clap at you, but it's also you just enjoy that that character. I would imagine and that what you're doing. I would hope so, but some people don't. They don't even know any of that. Mm. There's that vibe of they just want to be famous. You know that's interesting. I heard somebody recently talk about. Um, like uh, the last few years of you know the rise of like YouTubers and just the online media kind of famous elements of or these people. Do you think that plays into that? Like the people who just want to be famous and kind of that's what the social media has brought up. Or do oh you, sure, because I I wonder. Like, if, I, don't, I wonder. I mean, like um, and I also do love their like that vibe of like let's go out and put put out a show kind of vibe. Yeah that youtube does seem to have and other like people who do create and write their own stuff but i also like people who've written better stuff and have been doing it longer and you know i don't know i think shakespeare was a pretty good writer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just doesn't have youtube darn it yeah do you see any you know this is what made me when i heard this you know i heard some i some friends were talking about just youtube like is it the new is it just this online thing where people are just being famous because it's like the 15 minutes of fame? But it also seems like it's really just become also, on the flip side of that, a medium for people that maybe aren't, that haven't made it onto a Hollywood production yet. It can also be a medium for them to actually start to show their craft in a different way. True. And then when they do and they break, that's wonderful as well. It's just sometimes the, the humor, the material is just not mine. Yeah. Has there been any interest for you to try out that me i know you've done some you've been on some stuff but... sure but I'm, I'm too lazy and i can't be bothered sometimes <laughs> i'm also i'm not the best self-motivator that's why i've been uh, like an actor i like when other people are in charge yeah let someone else I've, we've all done that we've all like had our like theater companies in chicago and we've all done it and put your own money and we, even right now we just did like a short film with friends and we all Put, I'm sure I think put together 8,000, if not more. And we don't know what's going to happen to it, but we were just at that point where, like, sometimes you have to do your own stuff because otherwise, who are you doing it for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're just doing, like, a, if you're just going to be guy number four in a project and, yeah, get paid, you know, 1,000 for the day, but then, you know, your work is you've just done guy number four. And some people are fine with that. Some people are just like, weekend warriors in a sense like you know people who just have a regular job any kind of job it could be an accountant it could be a a craftsman it could be a carpenter it could be a you know a hr rep 
and maybe they don't really like their job, but they're good at it, mm-hmm. or or that doing that job that they're good at affords them their weekend hobby of like going to the lake every weekend. Sure. So I don't live that way because I I don't have a job that or a career where I'm like I just want to like act so I can go you know um, build kites on the weekend. Mm-hmm. I think like my job is is fun and my hobby, so I have to make sure that. In addition to the stuff that pays well, that uh, work that I might not really like, balances with the stuff that you do think matters that you might not be, you might be at a loss for doing. Is, do you find that there's any way to, like that that balance? You've been doing it for so long. I think everything you just said is true, right? It's the yeah. Some people are just in a job because they want to fund a life or fund something outside yeah. of that, right? Where this is part of your life, and it's, you want to do the stuff that you love. Sometimes, though, you know, we do have to balance, like you said, you know, we're doing things that we may not love. Do you find that there's any way to kind of balance that? I I talked to somebody uh, who's done like some acting and stunt double work for years and years. And he said, I did the stunt double work because it allowed me to turn down the crap I didn't want to do because I had the paycheck coming in. Sure. Do, Do you find that there's any other way to like kind of weed through those guy number four jobs that you don't want an element you know part of it but like the people who get to do that are the people who already have like you said like a different job Mm -hmm. those are the people who like can afford not to like do the shitty jobs yeah it does it also help then if you've also if you're being offered the the better jobs then you know it does does that come with experience in time I think so. I mean, there's also, I think just there's privilege. Like people Mm. can, if you're just starting out, you kind of have to take those jobs. And if you have experience then you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like even like, think about like your consulting, you can consult now because you've had, you've done that experience and put that time in. Yeah. Where now you don't have to just be like a regular employee. You can be like, well, I have this experience. I just want to do this aspect of the job, advise you on something do a project i'll come in next week and we'll assess how it went does that always work that way with acting as well though for because i think about experience but that doesn't always like you could be acting for 10 15 years and maybe not be getting the roles that everybody's getting or that you want i agree yeah so is it sometimes more than just the experience piece it's the like is there luck or is there something else that's involved you There's think? always, it's, what is that? Luck is opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. That kind of thing. Like, of course, how you connect, how you um, network is a big deal. Yeah. People might not like it, but it is a bit of the way of the world. No, you're right. I agree. If you can't, I mean, like, and, what, and it, sometimes it'll come down to what if both actors are good? But then it, it will be like, well, what, I don't want to spend eight months out of the year with this person who might be is equally a great actor but it's just kind of like a a weirdo or a tool (laughs) yeah hollywood is just i don't know this is from an outsider obviously you you know i've known lots of people in hollywood and i've kind of like connected and i've lived in that space but i've never been on the entertainment on the other side of the camera part of that so you know that's a little foreign for me, but I can see from working in that industry that Hollywood, it's, it's a challenge to be an actor. It's a challenge to be, be talent. And, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of typecasting and lots of pieces like that. Do you find that that's a reality as you've been in this for such a long time in this industry that like, like the typecasting still is as prevalent as it was, or is that, is that like, you know, can you give a little, maybe a little description of what you think that even feels like it looks like? I mean, like, obviously, people are always still going to cast you based on what you look like. And it, obviously, diversity stuff has become at the forefront for a while. But, you know, that's going to be that conversation. That question's always going to be there until people can get over it, until, like, on film, TV, which are hyper real mediums versus theater mm-hmm. or books or that kind of abstract or, you know, visual art. Until, like, people get over the fact that, like, it'll be a family set in a time period, like, say, 1950s Brooklyn, but it'll be a family, and someone's doing an Arthur Miller play, and it's a cast of all different ethnicities playing a family. 
until we get there, then the until we get to that assumed and that's okay position, which some people don't like. Some people will always say like, no, it should if one family should all be. I'm not saying even that they shouldn't be diverse, but make them all one ethnicity mm-hmm. until that stops bothering people. Like it bothers people, like what genitals you have, depending on what bathroom you go into. Sure. I think it'll still be a problem. But, you know, like, I get so tired of it. I mean, like, I know, like, I should be, like, a little bit more vigilant about it and everything, but it's just so sad. Like, it keeps happening, you know? Yeah. It's nothing new. I, and I can see what you mean about being tired of it, because it, if it's constant and it's always there, do, do you feel like there's, because in, diversity and inclusion has been definitely on the forefront, like you said, do you feel like there's, because there's more of a, maybe a focus on it that maybe it is starting to evolve or we're just talking about it more. I think we're just talking about it more. Yeah. You know, we'll keep seeing and keep waiting and hoping, but like, it just feels like it's just, yeah, we know it's there. It's the same thing. Nothing's changed. Does that, uh, I mean, it is changing for the better. I'm just like, I, I don't know what else to talk about it. Like it, it is like, yeah, yeah we, we know it's a problem. We know it's been happening. It's, but we actually have to see action now, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have to see it. Oh, but at, then, at the same point, we still have Tilda Swinton and Scarlett Johansson playing, you know, Asian characters. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and, and that's really what's true. There's a lot to talk about it yet. Yeah. We're still seeing some of that. And the reason, part of the reason I brought that up too, I just think about, you know, the newbie actor, the the person just getting into the industry. You know, that you've been doing it for quite a while and, and you do stuff that you love. Is there anything that you would recommend or suggest to a diff, you know, a, a newbie actor about this is what it's going to be like or some advice? I would, uh, my thing is always go to school. Like I'd prefer people to be trained, mm. like not just jump in. Like I just, I think there's such a thing. Like I wouldn't go to like just automatically become like a carpenter. You're sure. like, hey, I decided to just take this up. I saw a YouTube video. Anyone can do it. Or like a doctor or even like a politician, as, as we've been noticing in politics lately. I'm like, the idea that <laughs> oh, uh, anyone can do it. I'm like, really? <laughs> Let's not get started that. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't know if you can, anyone can do it because you're not doing it. I, I, do you almost think that's like a preconceived, like this, I don't know, non-actors believe there's like not training that's involved in acting like i don't know like you like, just wake I, up and it's do it it's fascinating to me that they think that it's just oh i can do it i always oh, I, I saw i took a class how i can and because again we're also used to like there are people like who have never done anything who have become never taken one bit of training who have turned into our best actors of all time well sure but that's so few and far between that. right pardon that's few and far in between don't you think yeah, but people do. Sure. Somebody said to me though, some of the training even comes with even how to how to work on a set though. It's not it is acting, but it's also understanding that where the cameras are, how things work. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is so hands on. Like you mm. won't, you can't. How do you train that in a class? Like, you know, don't bother someone when they're working, or don't like talk small talk nonsense with someone when they're clearly have five things on their plate. Like that just comes from practice. Common sense and practicality. Mm, the okay. Yeah, it's, I think it is like interesting. Like, you would know, like, you can't, how do you take that class to be like, find the right cubicle for you? You know, like, pick one near the bathroom, pick one near a corner. Yeah. How do you know that? Unless you've been in that culture. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's actually smart for many things, I think applies. How, like, how do you know unless you've actually experienced something? Yeah. I do think that people should, um, do background even at least once or twice try it out mm-hmm. i did in chicago when i was a kid like in uh during school just to be like all right i want to see what the experience is i remember people complaining like fellow actors a lot of obviously theater theater kids too and i remember being like all right well maybe that's a sign that you shouldn't be you might not want to work on film mm. if you don't like the, those long hours and that's a bother mm-hmm. so you know that it was, it was just very like well at least now you know you know, it, some, I remember someone being like, we were there for so long and I was so bored. And I remember being like, I went and I was like, I just was just watching everything. Oh, like absorbing it, learning. Yeah. yeah. But I do remember, but I also had that like college kid bias that I could do that. I remember like someone saying like, 
And I think I took a cab home or something too. Because this was in Chicago. It was like the Keanu Reeves movie, I think, with Marissa Tomei and James Spader called The Watcher. Oh yeah. And I just remember like I took a cab home too, and I remember like someone being like, "Ooh." It was late. It was in like Chinatown. It was in like the best area of Chicago back in the early 2000s. But it also reminded me like, oh, some people do do this. It's their job. Hmm. So I remember that being like, oh, yikes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like this is, I was just doing it because I'm still getting my tuition paid for by my family. And I just wanted to slum it or try it and see what it would be like. But I remember like getting that appreciation for background artists like oh these are for some people it is they're living and everyone is an actor and their thing is vital well even if you're not doing background i would almost imagine like that would almost be good advice to somebody who's starting out is go try all these things so you can have an appreciation and understand how they work yeah especially because i mean if you want to see what it's like to be on a set and if you don't want to be if you don't like how the background people are treated you know then maybe you might not want to just be background roles. You might have to work at your craft and try to get speaking lines. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Those are great experiences and great ideas. Like do that stuff, figure out what you like, what you don't like. And that's well, I mean, especially then I just remember like simple stuff like that. Cause then, you know, we're all in this together. Everyone's like, I'm very much like a working class mentality. Yeah. I have, you know, like also coming from Chicago, like theater and acting felt very much like a team sport. Oh, huh. And so, no one was better than each other. And I remember like, I do see like a lot of people, especially it, this is just my own Chicago bias. Like people who didn't come from Chicago, I remember them just being like jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? The, the Chicago people were always like nicer to everybody. Oh. And I've lost some of that Chicago bias, but like every so often it still does creep up. And I'm very proud of like that idea of like, no, we're all in here. We're all helping tell the story. Yeah. Like, does it feel like, um, is it, was that a Chicago thing that was like the team sport or do you feel like that's still the working class w- with acting in LA? Both part and parcel, you know, not one's better than the other in that regard. I just remember like I learned, I grew up and came up in Chicago. So that's what I attributed to. Mm, okay. Now that you've been doing it for such a long time, you know, like flashing forward with, you know, in the past you were like, Hey, you know, uh, you try to be like, you know, background, you've done different things. Is there anything that you're doing today that, you, you know, you keep trying to learn or trying to grow at? Writing. Mm. I think that uh, it's just every actor does or at least should have their voice because, you know, you have to know yourself. You have to know what you can and cannot do. So you by that, you know, knowing that you should be able to like, you can write for yourself better than anyone else can. And so it is very important, especially as we were talking about like online stuff and even just like most comedians, writers, you know, that we know, the comedic actors that we remember and think about in their work that holds up, a lot of times they wrote it as well or or created it or helped collaborate. So if you really want to like make this mark with your work as well as just keep working, I think that the big thing I've noticed now is like, you have to um, write. Mm. And so that's such a, it's so like, I've just, I've made it such such an art, uh, a beast. I've already made it so like, oh my God, writing, it seems so much. So that's my fault. I've done that to myself. Mm -hmm. So that's the part that I think I'm still trying to work on. Can you give me an example too? Um, And I'm following, but can you give me an example of, some of the things you might write like is it script based stuff or just the stories or your perspectives yeah everything script based stuff sketches little youtube video here there anything Mm. okay yeah well now i've seen obviously some of the stuff that you've been doing so that would make sense a lot of it is improvised but that in itself is writing it's writing on the fly is that something you were doing when you were younger as well or something you kind of more stepped into no, I did more improv and sketch here in L.A. Chicago is the theater baby mm-hmm. for the most part. When you, I, I'm curious about when you were young as a thinking about I, you wanted to act to versus where you are at today. Mm-hmm. Do you have sort of a goal or a vision of what that success looks like for you as an actor? I just want a house. Mm-hmm. 
if I can afford home residence, especially in the most expensive Southern California that we live in, you know, I remember yeah. asking such a stupid question once to like an ex, like, why is it so expensive in Southern California? And he was like, because everyone wants to live here, you idiot. I remember <laughs> just being like, oh, yeah, it's desirable. The weather is nice. The yeah. location is great. You know, New York, L.A., this is one of America's world-class cities. We're never for lack of food or great, you know, great dining, great entertainment in this city. So it's just people want to live here. So why is it a house? What does that signify? I think it's just that American dream aspect. Mm. Like, I don't want to rent anymore. I don't like this money being wasted. And if acting's my field, I should, I want to be successful in my field. And it's hard enough field where like I do have friends in Chicago who have bought their houses, mm -hmm. you know, because it's cheaper here. It's, it's much harder to just get that, you know, and also I don't, I'm not, I didn't, I, I haven't wasted money, you know, I spend, I eat out, I enjoy myself, but like I didn't waste like I, big chunks of money. I, I did save away and I'm not even touching even for like necessarily home ownership. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like, you know, destitute by any means, but it's just like that element of like, I don't have that. Like you hear people saying like, especially in Southern California, that they're just coming in and people are just coming in with cash over the asking price. And I'm like, gosh, how do you even, <laughs> how do you even do as that? an artist even get to compete? play in that world then does it at all, without having like four other jobs or something right on the side i also don't know if i want if i'm if i want to do that either i get that you know it's, i'm not working at starbucks during the day well, where a lot of friends do have to so i'm grateful in that regard but then maybe if i did have a side job i'd have that house <laughs> a little sooner and not just relying on just acting money i was thinking that it also would signify that you know, you're just like everybody else being paid for your craft and you're like, like correctly, like you can sustain your lifestyle on it and you're successful at, you know, like you said, you're not destitute at all, but if no, you can buy the house. Like you said, like I'm not, I, you know, like anyone else, it's not like easy money either. Yeah. But it also like, you know, if let's say go back to like you're an example, like if you're an accountant or HR rep or whatever, a lot of those people can buy a house because they're in this kind of standard job and there's a set pay and sure they have to work hard, but it's not like they have to always, they're not like auditioning in the same way. Right. So it made me kind of think about like if, if you buy a house, it actually means that you're doing really well also in your, in your craft and it's going and it's flowing the way you want it to or hope or at least part of it. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 You may not have the exact roles. Maybe. Is there any kind of roles that, you are would really love to play or do no people do ask that like i mean like what's your dream role i'm like well they're not necessarily even written you know like for like character types like me like yeah and i don't want to just always say like this white role or this european based shakespeare part like that's maybe their stories but like my i guess i don't see my story mm. out there so right now i'm happy like when that you do have to align yourself kind of with like new writers and whenever I see like period piece stuff coming up in like TV film, I'm just like, Oh, great. <laughs> right. Like, you know, we're not going to be there unless it's like late eighties and we'll be accented and yeah. anything before that we're not existing because we're, you know, we didn't live in this country. Well, how does that play into now into this, um, new recurring role you are, um, taking on for crazy ex-girlfriend i don't know much about it to be honest i okay. don't start till the end of um august i know i'm playing donald and champlin's friend on the show yeah and um that'll be fun because it's also a non-traditional part i think i'm a, a dad yeah that's what i read yeah and it's just very it just seems very just like nice normal that show is so full of non-traditional like types getting attention mm -hmm. from like the Asian bro stuff to people over 40 to bisexuals. It's just nice to be like, ah, oh, like I just love the show. I was such a huge fan legitimately like seeing every episode before I even got, you know, uh, approached to like 
come play. Because mm-hmm. I know a lot of people who work on that show and they knew I was fans and they were doing a thing, I guess, where like they are having a little bit more success. And I get it of like writing for people that they know. Yeah. You know, not that that's the norm for everything, but if I was working on my own project, I'd definitely cast and go through my friends first before I'd go search elsewhere. And I guess that's part of where that networking does come into play too. Yeah. Well, if I know like a friend of mine is a big fan or is available and wants to help out, then I'm going to go to them first for anything, you know. Yeah. So it just seems like it's going to be a blast and I truly love the show and I'm very excited and nervous and can't wait to start. I love all that. I I yeah. also do I obviously don't know much about it either, but when I read a little bit about the type of role it sounded like, it did make me think like it's it's like it's the opposite of the stuff we just talked about that didn't sound great, right? The 80s yeah. with an accent and all this stuff. It's more it about It just is normal yeah. like again the show you know, they've been feted for like again their inclusivity with um, Asian stuff. Again, no one like not to be saccharine either, not like to be like the noble, wise Asian or anything. It's just like no, right. these are just people living and doing, you know. Right. It's not objectified in some way because of some special thing. Yeah. Inclusivity doesn't necessarily mean that you have to like show them at their best light. It just show them have them be a part right the average regular lifestyle that we all you know yeah. have yeah yeah that's people do I get like nervous it. and like both sides of like say a given ethnicity like one that's underrepresented and one that's being represented in the wrong stereotypical reason mm. sometimes you can't win like there's some truths to certain things that some cultures don't want to be shown <laughs> okay. or talk about but in comedy that's where the ego has to go Right, because you have you to play to leave. on it. Yeah. Right. And so I think that's always been very interesting to me that where that becomes an issue. Because like every, you can't just be the awesome, great group. You have, Then there's no comedy, you know. We didn't like the TV show Friends, even though they were all so beautiful and attractive. But we liked the fact that they were unlucky in love. If they were all attractive and all like had it together with dating, no one would watch that show. Yeah. We don't want to watch successful people. Then there's no conflict. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to look at it too. I think for the average American or average whoever to think. Yeah, I never way. understood like how like you want to show one culture off in like the best light ever. I'm like, but then that's not comedy. Mm. I don't want to watch people who have a better life than me. <laughs> I want to see people struggle. And I don't want. I don't want these have... homeowners. What? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, and that's I think there's a lot of truth in that. Do you, I kind of feel like we see a little bit more of that these days? A little bit more of the not that, mm, not the best light all the time. Right, it's getting there. Yeah. Is now that you've obviously you know there's always more to go in our career and, and more things to do. But I'm, do you ever look back at kind of where you started at and? Um, like you mentioned earlier about, well, maybe I should have moved to LA earlier, right? You know, um, it, is there anything that you would do a little bit differently now that if you were to look back at some of the careers or roles or things that you've done, if you, you know, not regretting anything, but if there, if you were to look back at the roles or the, the experiences you've had through your career, is there anything that you would try or do something differently? Um, I guess at this point, like looking back, I think I would have done New York sooner. I would have liked to have lived and worked in New York for a bit. And now I feel, um, yeah, I feel like I'd, I'd, I'm too old to like go and start in New York, but mm. that might change, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, New York, that's at, like, even like this past year, I thought about maybe just going to New York for a bit. Just to try a couple things or spend some time, see what comes up. Yeah. yeah. It's a different different city altogether and such the the vibe and excitement's different. I talk about it like I'm an actor. I don't really know that part, but it sounds like it. Yeah, and I do I am a little envious of my friends who have come from New York and did their time there and had all those connections and that life. But I came from Chicago, so like, you know, I I can't complain too much. Yeah, a lot you... of people just did Chicago as well. But I still do, like, that's the one, like, oh, I wish I'd done, like, New York in my 20s, maybe. Yeah. Like, a year or two, and then come to L.A., but, 
you know, that's that's that one. I don't like to live in regret and look back too much other than to learn stuff, but mm-hmm. not to lament, but not to lament. Yeah, I think that's really smart. Yeah, learn from your experiences. What's next for you? There's more writing, obviously more auditions, all that stuff, but um, anything in mind for like the, oh, there's those active sirens. I know, sorry. No, it's good, it makes it real. Like I'm going to pretend you're on set, Barf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a part right now. But is there anything like in the in the near future that you're um, excited about in addition to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend or anything that's coming up that you really want to focus on? No, there have been like projects where I've been a part of like that have been like gone through development and they've taken so long mm. and so many things have happened where like there's like a team of four of us and then one will book something because you can't keep waiting. While you wait for certain things, you have to move on to the next thing. Sure. And one, he books one or I book something or someone else gets a writing gig out of that group and you know then you just have to postpone and delay again and wait. And you, so there's that element of like you're always working on something and trying and then you have to like wait and delay and just wait again for the next thing. That almost seems like a skill set, like be, to be able to like wait, juggle, be patient, do more stuff. Yeah. Like do, you have to. All right. I'm, I'm holding on to these dates for this project, um, but only for as long as I can until the next project comes along and then you have to prioritize a move Mm -hmm. especially now as friends are getting the big thing big shift is like friends are getting we're not in our 20s anymore friends are getting married having Mm -hmm. kids sure having mortgages and so that fun passion project does have to die off a bit sometimes just sounds like a little bit of reality like that's like life reality right yeah age i guess i guess i can see like where people settle a bit yeah, for sure. Well, it's even like what you said about the making choices and, you know, yeah, you'd love it, but there's still moments where you're like, hmm, am I only good at this? It's just nice that, like, you know, social life is going well. So, like, then certain other things fall by the wayside. Yeah. I think that's the part of the peak and valley, too. Like, that can be really good, but maybe, you know, well, it sounds like, you know, you're starting soon on this new show. Yeah. And then and in the meanwhile, like, and I say that, like, but, like, I'm doing, like, you know, two days on a friend's film this month, a web series with an old writer friend, mm-hmm. you know, and things as long as the union okayed and people are, you know, being paid if they can or if not, that everyone's being taken care of or it's someone's passion project that you're just helping. There's this idea of story that I do like, like you're helping to tell someone's story. Mm. Which mm-hmm. That's where I get scared of like people who don't like the craft. Yeah of acting or storytelling i'm like then what are you in it for oh, fame yeah. you know and those people are the ones who i fear are like in it for fame and the wrong reasons right and i can see that that not clicking well with that kind of person because their intention not just the fame part intentions could bleed into other things that they do yeah i could see that sounds like um well, let me ask this, because I, I I asked a musician that I interviewed not too long ago, I said, um, if somebody was going to start out as a musician, what would you tell them? And he actually said, I tell them not to, because it's so hard to make money as a musician. And he said, but if you love it and you can't imagine yourself doing anything else, then be all in and do it as hard as you could. Do you feel that way then about acting, about if you're going to love it, you got to be all in and go for it? I do think so, but I mean, you have to be smart about it too. Like, you can't be destitute and poor along that path and be sad. You know, there's that element of like, are you happy? Yeah. Like, if you're not happy, because some people are not happy not doing anything. Mm hmm. So it's a balance. And I, and I get that. Yeah. But like, do you understand? Like, some people really are not happy if they're they are busy and I'm one of those people so like I have to I like being busy I like being active hence all the side projects and and passion projects as well blended in yeah because if you show. don't I mean like then what are you waiting for yeah you gotta make it happen yeah at least if you're not gonna write or create your own projects and you have to avail yourself I, I do tell like students and other people like when I do talk to them like if you don't object to the subject matter, which everyone can, you know, that's your right when you're doing a project, like 
do you believe in what they say? No, then don't do it. Mm. No one's forcing you, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you need that money? Then if you do, then you might have to do that project and then you might have to just be quiet and settle or what's what's the word? Um, compromise, mm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. But there's no shame if that's your job and it's putting food on your table or making rent or paying for your kid. Sure. So just as long as you are okay. And I think what the truth of some of this is, Parv, that I've really enjoyed is that you didn't sugarcoat the whole thing. It's not like you were like, let me tell you how amazing it is. Like you were like, I love it. Do people it's really say that? Uh, some people do. But they're, then they're, they're full of bullshit. <laughs> but that's what I love is that it's like it can be hard and that's OK, but you got to love it. And you, but you have to have like a reality check half the time. Yeah, the the, the BS kind of like everything's great is always so odd to me. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it isn't, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be. What What are the things in this in this career in this craft though that like, like when do you get super excited about something? So I know the reality check for you, but when do you like this is this part is amazing? When you get paid. <laughs> okay. No, I'm teasing. That is fun though. Uh, well, sure. Um, we all like money. I, I do like when. You like I'm what I'm why I'm so excited about Crazy X is I get to work on something that I'm really a fan of yeah. and like and I'm excited about it, and that doesn't happen that often. And it does, but then it's just such a nice reminder when it's coming up that that, that I get to work for a month or so on a really fun project. Yeah. And that makes and sense. I, and I do like it enough that I'd be I did tell him like when a, one of the writer friends uh, Audrey, you know, had reached out a little bit and I was like, I don't care what I'm doing. I just want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you just really, uh, like, like you said, legitimately were a fan of the show. Yeah. And then there'll be other places like when, you know, when you're not a fan, when you're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'll be other ones where you're like, you don't, it's an offer probation. You don't have to audition. Then you're like, all right. If I didn't have to audition for that accented role and they want to pay me anyway, fine. Fine. There is an element though, like I, I you know, I do joke about the selling out aspect, but there's a flip. There's there's a line. There's like you have to decide and I've said no to some stuff and I can, you know, I can afford to right now. Some people can't. But you definitely have to like ask yourself like what is What's your line? You know, like, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think I want to do. Uh, obviously, I'm, if it fits the story, sure. But just for the hell of it, I don't want to necessarily just play an accented character. Or like, hey, you're going in for this role of Joe. I do a take. And they're like, do you want to try it with an accent? I'll be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> because that's not what you wrote. You did not write this guy, Joe. And yes, there's a possibility that Joe could have been. Born in Mumbai and lived in the States for 10 years, but that's not what you said originally. Yeah. And so if you have me in here and we're going to do this, don't just arbitrarily change it just because of the color of my skin. That's mm -hmm. just lazy. That's boring. It also doesn't feel true or authentic. Well, that's the laziness. Do you think that applies just even to like you said, there's a line, you know, you like you can don't feel shame if you need to take the job or whatever, but... You know, figure yeah, because we can't tell people, and and nine times out of ten, they're going to do it anyway. You know, it's just depending on which actor are they going to get to tell mm -hmm. that necessarily bad or good story, and then it becomes sad because why are these shitty people getting the opportunity to tell their story? Mm -hmm. You'd have to wonder about that. You're like, what? And it's true. You're like, fuck. How did this person? Why did they get to tell their? stupid shitty story mm -hmm. but then if you don't like that aspect of it then get in there too and change that hustle do you think that sort of like bigger picture of you know choose what you are most comfortable with you think that applies to like other careers as well or just to anything in life like just really know what you stand for and what you can and cannot do true i mean like there's that element of you know fight your pick i'll pick your and choose your battles yeah and i'm i'm all for that but it depends on if you're in that ability, if you can. I'm not going to fault someone. Of course. Because we know that that person didn't write that material, you know. That person didn't write, you know, that 
that co-star on, you know, a Disney Channel kids show, but then that two line co-star also might have gotten them their insurance minimum for the year. Yeah. So they can like, you know, feed their you know, take their kid to the doctor. Right. Yeah. And who knows that that person could be a great Shakespeare actor during the year as well, but that those few T V co star gigs does pay for our insurance for a family. Yeah, I think that's an important point, Barf. Like I think about that too. Like we all take jobs or do things because we need to but you know, put food at the table or whatever. But it doesn't right. have, it also doesn't have to be your reality for the rest of your life. But you have to and survive. It, and it doesn't have to be if it's that arduous to you, mm. like if it's that soul crushing, then you have to change your job. Yeah. You know, if it's going to be a problem, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, as long as there's still storytelling, families, things, like, I get it. If it's a play about race riots, you n- maybe not, might not be able to blind color cast it for it to get the most, uh, for you to get the uh, most, val- valid is the wrong word, most gripping point across. Mm-hmm. If it's a mixed race thing, that's well. Then again, there's that. That could be one person's point of view, you know. So I don't know if it's all or nothing for everything. Yeah, that's a lot of gray. It, I think, like you just said, well, maybe that's not that person's point of view or somebody else. I, I love that this has been like this super reality check of like acting. Like, there's been some really cool, interesting facts about kind of our, where you've been. Obviously, it's like your story with. Um, it's almost behind the green curtain a little bit is what it feels like for this conversation, uh-huh. which I really appreciate you taking the time doing that. Sure. You know, well, obviously it'll be in the fall that um, the show will come out and people can find you obviously on, uh, on TV and CW for that. Um, but online, you know, I always like to end with people. Um, uh, where can people follow you online? Oh, I'm at Parvesh. P-A-R-V-E-S-H. On Twitter and at Parvey, P-A-R-V-E-Y, on Instagram. I like those two social media mediums. Yeah. Yeah. Well, perfect. And we'll link to that in the show notes and also on the website so people can follow along and see some of your new projects that are coming out. How kind. Of course. Well, Parv, I really appreciate you taking the time to just have the conversation. Like I said, this reality check of um, great stuff and also how things really work out in a way to Well, look it's at just it. like, I mean, like it's the working actor's perspective. You yeah. Know? Yeah. A journeyman. Like, I don't have a lot of like sol- solid stuff. I don't have like this. Uh, I've had, a, I've been fortunate to have a few ongoing things mm-hmm. from on camera recurring stuff to voiceover stuff too but i you know like and we do know like there's a struggle for a lot of our actors so i'm just coming from my perspective you know like i'm sure other people who might other actors or artists who might hear this might be like oh wow i wish my problem my fear or lament was getting a house not just making rent but yeah that's also the difference of being in my 30s to my 20s that you know, or even someone in their 40s or 50s might have that same struggle right now. And I just always remember like your own perspective is your own reality. Mm-hmm. And so this is my reality. Like I'm, I know I'm doing better than some of my friends and I'm doing and I'm not as successful as some of my friends, but I'm just this is just what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really true. You're right. And it is a reality that you're in your 30s, not your 20s. And uh, you know, it's where view. And then been. equally, someone like in their twenties could be, you know, equally struggling or have their second house. You know, like I have friends in their twenties who are, you know, uh, you know, who've had their <laughs> sure, of course, had a great first year and uh, bought a house and everything. I know that I don't want house to always be that level of success, but it definitely is one that clouds mind. It's definitely a family thing, and if you can pay your rent. Paying rent is, I think, what was that big shift for my family that uh, that they knew I was okay. Yeah, we, well, it stands for so much more, right? It, it's not it's not just the house, but it actually means you're doing all these other things, and it's and you're actually making a success. Yeah, it, it's what that house, the ability to pay for yourself, represents. Yeah, absolutely, and, and especially like Asian culture, like people, we do take care of one another in a sense. Like you do. 
you know, we are very fortunate, like that a lot of us did get our college tuition paid for. Mm -hmm. It was just like a given. It wouldn't be, it was just like, not as soon, but like, of course my parents would pay. And I'm very great. And then it wasn't until I got to college that I realized like, oh, they aren't paying. Some people's parents don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that like your perspective is your reality? Again, it goes back yeah. to that. I really did. It, it was shocking to be like, oh, your parent. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I just remember being very grateful then. Yeah. To mine. Yeah. We all have a different story and, or a different path of how it works out. Yep. Well, good. Well, again, thanks for having the chat and going through all that stuff. And I think you're right. This is a great perspective of like the working, the working actor, at least from your perspective. And I think it's smart. So thanks, thank you. Thanks for taking well, the time. Thank you, Christopher. Of course. of course. I didn't, I hope I, hope I wasn't too dour. You were not. Sour. I just wanted to t t tell the truth, share the tea. I love that though, because you even started off with the authenticity. And I think that we were just real about it. And I, that's what, that's what part of the show is really about. Like we can inspire people, but we also have to be some real. Now over to you. Any thoughts or questions you'd like to share? Seriously, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me or the guests? We'll answer them and even get the guests to help us. So send us a message, use our Facebook page and email us there, or post a comment or question on the page, or tweet us at Accidental Info using hashtag living your journey. You can find out more about all the guests, links to their sites and social channels, and even bonus content all at accidentalinformation.com. Now, a couple favors. Go subscribe to the show and you'll be the first to get the download before everyone else. Also, take just a couple moments and head over to the show in iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a quick review. Quick, easy, and I would love it. This totally supports us and it helps me bring in interesting guests each week and keeps the show going. Also, I love to read them and see what you guys are really thinking. Thanks for joining the conversation. And remember, Living Your Journey is available every Tuesday. Until next week. <laughs>